This is the bottom or base plate of our press plate assembler. The way we'll model it is to open Creo Parametric, we'll select the working directory, and we will open the base or bottom plate. The part will open with the four holes already in the corners, the chamfers, and the rounds on the corners. We will then come in and put some of the other features onto it. We will start with the center hole, which is a simple 9.2 millimeter hole straight the way through the part. We'll create one slot and then mirror it around a center reference plane. We'll then come back in and do the four counterboard holes. The way we'll do this is to do an extrude straight the way through the part to allow space for the thread. And then we'll come back in and do a separate extrude for the counterbore to allow space for the cap head screw. Start Creo Parametric. Make sure you select Creo Parametric, double click it, and wait for the program to open. Maximize the page up and select the working directory. Your press plate folder will probably be stored under the folder tree and then into the shared area. My folder stored on the desktop, select press plate. This is an extra folder I've got in here just for doing this video editing and just say OK to it. Once you've clicked on OK, you should be able to see that you've successfully changed the working directory. Let's go and open our base or bottom plate. Open. Select the plate and say open. Note that we are working inside the part called base plate or bottom plate and it has all the features that we created previously. Let's start by putting our center hole into the part. I'm going to go to extrude. Wait for the dashboard to change. Select the top surface. Make sure you select the surface and not the datum plane. The whole surface should turn green. Left click onto it. I can rotate the view by using my sketch view. And because we created our part using our center rectangle, I have the reference lines or the intersection of the reference lines in the center of the part. This is where I want to put the first hole. So I'm going to go to my circle command, select it, bring it down, let it snap to the intersection of the two reference planes, left click once, move the cursor out, left click again. Note I have no dimensions until I click onto the select arrow. And now I only have one dimension because the circle is constrained by the intersection of the two reference planes. I can give the part a diameter of 9.2 millimeters. Enter. Turn your view back to isometric. Go to AB, click onto it, scroll down. Isometric or trimetric. Click on the green tick to accept it to take us back into the 3D environment. Again, Creo thinks we want to do a protrusion. I'm going to change the direction of the extrude, clicking onto the double headed arrow. As before, Creo should understand we want to remove material. For good modeling practice, we're going to change the extrude to go all the way through the part. Click onto the drop down browser arrow and select this icon here. Doing this takes away the value of the extrude and therefore doesn't present any strange dimensions inside an engineering drawing. Left click on the green tick to accept it. Click away in space. It's now going to put the slotted hole in. I'm going to do this in the same way. Click on to extrude. Select the top surface. Click on to sketch view. The slotted hole runs between one of the sides with a chamfer and a radius on it. I'm going to draw two circles. Started somewhere up here, left click once, bring the circle down, left click again to complete it. I'm then going to come back up. Note I get my green line to show me that the holes are at the same height 
then get across to the other side somewhere here left click once to start the circle and it will snap to giving me the same radius left click again I can then join the two circles using my line command select line bring it down it should snap to being on the highest point of the circle left click once bring it across and it will snap again to being on the highest point of the other circle left click again move the cursor into space and middle mouse this cancels the command I can draw the bottom side of the slot on by coming down select the underside this time of the circle left click once bring the cursor across and again it will snap again showing that it's tangent left click again bring the cursor away and middle mouse you'll note I'm still in the line command to, to come out of the line command and go into select I can just press on the wheel again we can now go and put a center line on to make the two circles symmetric select center line come down to the vertical reference plane and let it snap left click once to start the center line and bring the cursor round and down until it snaps to being vertically down left click again we can then go to the symmetric icon select it and I can now tell it that I want the center of this circle left click and the center of this circle left click to be symmetric around this vertical center line left click we can then come and trim back the circle by going to our delete segment command select it and select the inside of this circle and the inside of this circle either middle mouse to cancel the delete segment command or go to the select arrow it's exactly the same you can see I've got here a dimension that gives me a distance between the center of the circle and the vertical reference line I'm going to go and overrule that by putting a new dimension in so I'm going to go to my normal command select it I'm going to hover over the center of this circle left click once I'm going to hover over the center of this circle left click once move the cursor into space and then press on the wheel or middle mouse this gives me a new dimension which is meant to be 35 millimeters enter I can then create a new dimension to give them the height of the slot between this center point of the circle and this reference line here make sure you're still in the normal dimension command select the center of the circle left click once select the horizontal reference line left click once move the cursor into space and then middle mouse this distance again should be 35 the two slots should have a distance between them of 70 click away in space to deselect it we now want to go back to the select command so we can come and change this value here go to select hover over the value this is the radius of the circle double click the value and change it to be 4.1 we can left click onto the green tick to accept this sketch takes us back into the 3d environment go to a b scroll down to trimetric send the extrude the other direction this time we'll do it by clicking onto the arrow on the extrude left click onto it we do exactly the same as clicking the double headed arrow in the dashboard change the extrude type to go through all green tick to accept it click away in space deselect it rotate the part over I said we want to mirror this extrude onto the other side you'll notice the mirror command is grayed out until the extrude is selected hover over extrude 4 left click onto it go to mirror which is now active select it and then select the datum plane that runs across the part in this case the front one left click onto it green tick to accept it click away in space now you can rotate the part again to see what you've created let's now put in the holes for the counterbore cap head screws 
We'll do this by doing another extrude. So let's flick away in space to make sure nothing's selected first. Select extrude. Select top surface. Spin onto sketch view. So you're looking directly down onto the model. We'll draw one circle and mirror it twice. Again, to do this, I need to put some center lines on. So I'm going to put two center lines on, one horizontal and one vertical. Select center line. Come down to the horizontal reference line again, which it will snap to. Left click once. Let the center line snap to being horizontal. Left click again. Do the same in the vertical plane. Left click once to let it snap. Bring it down and round. Let it snap again to being vertical. Go back to your select command to deselect the center lines. And we can now come and put one circle in. Select circle. And I'm just going to bring the circle somewhere here. Left click once to start it. Bring the cursor out. Left click again. Either go to your select command to give us some dimensions or press on the wheel, middle mouse. The diameter of the hole is 5.2 millimeters. Double click it. Type in 5.2 and enter. The holes will have a total distance between them of 70, so we need to put a value of 35. Enter. In this direction, 15 millimeters to give us a total distance of 30. Click away in space. Again, you'll notice the mirror command is grayed out. Select circle, and it becomes active. Select mirror. Select the vertical center line. Click away in space. We can now mirror both of these two circles around the horizontal center line. Select the one circle. Hold the control key down to multi-select. Select the other circle. You can then go back to the mirror command, select it, and select the horizontal center line. Click away in space. Four circles are all constrained by this one part of the sketch. Green tick to accept it. Takes us back into the 3D environment. Go to AB. Scroll down. Go to Trimetric. Send the sketch the other direction by clicking onto the arrow here or in the dashboard. It makes no difference. Make sure you're removing material. Change the extrude to go through all. Green tick to accept the extrude. Click away in space to deselect everything. Rotate the part over. Refit to the screen. Let's now put the second extrude in on the holes for the counter bores to allow the cap head screws to sit below the surface. Select extrude. Select the top surface again. Orientate the view with sketch view. We want the counterboard holes to have the exact same centers as the four holes that we drew earlier. So what we're gonna do is reference the holes. Right click and hold. And select references. We can now select the four circles that we drew earlier. Once we've selected the four circles, you can then close the reference box down. We can then go back to the circle command. And because we've referenced the circles, we should be able to snap to the center of the circles. So when it snaps, left click once, bring the cursor out, and left click again to create a circle. Move to the center of the second circle, left click once, bring a circle out, and you'll get the equal radius symbol come up, left click again. 
move down to the third circle, let it snap to the center, left click once, bring the cursor out, equal radius symbol again, left click again. Repeat for the last one, find the center of the circle, left click once, bring the cursor out, get the equal radius symbol and left click again. If you then go to the select icon, left click onto it, we can then go and type in the value for the diameter of the circle. Double click it, type in a value of 9. It should have a head size of approximately 8.5 mil, this will give us a 0.25 either side of it. And notice when you click onto it, all the, all the four circles change together. To turn the view back into being a trimetric, AB, scroll down to trimetric, select the green tick to take us back into the 3D environment. To change the direction of the extrude again, let's do it in the dashboard this time, tell it to go down below. Because there's already a hole there, Korea doesn't know what we want to do with it, so we just have to manually tell it we need to remove material this time. But this time, rather than telling it to go through all, we want to give it a value of 5 mil. 5 and enter. You can now click onto the glasses. What the glasses will do will give you a preview of what the extrude is going to do. Just to check it, click onto the glasses. Press and hold the wheel to rotate the part over. And you can now see that you've created the canterboard holes. Click on the green tick to accept the extrude. Click away in space. Go to AB. Trimetric. Refit to screen. Let's just save the part by clicking onto the save icon. Click save. And if necessary, click OK. This now completes the base plate.